Good morning and uh, welcome to Geometry Do Now 22.1, uh, week 22, day one. So what we're going to be doing today, again, is we're going to use the Do Now and Exit Ticket uh, for uh, taking care of Chapter 6, which is a super short chapter with fairly straightforward ideas about lines and planes. <clears throat> I just want to remind you all to make sure your current work is being shared with me. A couple of you uh, would have received an email from me um, about some things I couldn't find uh, over the break. So please make sure that's all done. Later in this do now, there's a place for you to um, put <clears throat> Uh, a link for the work that you'll be using today. So you definitely want to review these two new ideas. This is from 6.2. First one is a basic idea that if a line is perpendicular to a plane, so a line perpendicular to a plane is also a line that's perpendicular to every line in the plane that passes through its foot. I remind you that the foot of a line is the intersecting point where it goes through a plane. This, of course, applies to lines that do not lie on the plane, where they will only go through a plane in one point, and that point is called the foot. So e, if AB is perpendicular to a plane M, EB, BD, and BC are all perpendicular to AB, which can be very useful when you're solving, uh, doing proofs around triangles, because that means you have some ready-made right angles for you. <clears throat> so. Uh, so based on that definition above, what is the reason for this double statement here uh, in number two? So we've got this, this situation, and there's this double statement. PF is perpendicular to FG, so there's PF and FG. They're perpendicular, <clears throat> and PF is perpendicular to FH. So we've been given the information that PF is perpendicular to plane K. So this line is perpendicular to plane K. F is the foot of it. <clears throat> we've also been given PG is perpendicular to PH. So PG and PH are perpendicular. I'm sorry, not a perpendicular, or just congruent. We want to prove ultimately is that angle G is congruent to angle H. There's angle G, there's angle H. So it would be useful ultimately to prove that this triangle PGF and PHF are congruent, and then you could apply kappa kappa kappa. Um, and you might be sniffing around that, oh, well, if PF is perpendicular, then maybe I've got some right angles, so maybe I've got uh, right triangles going on, and so hypotenuse leg will come into play, and in fact, it will. So the reason for the double statement that PF is perpendicular to FG and PF is perpendicular to FH is that <clears throat> PF is, per since PF is perpendicular to the plane, it is also perpendicular to any line that goes through its foot, which happens to be F. So PF is uh, perpendicular, okay, we can say, I'll say because PF is it's perpendicular to plane K, it is also perpendicular to any line that passes through its, I should say, any line that lies on plane K and passes through, scroll down a little bit, <clears throat> its foot at point F. He, uh, FG and FH both lie on plane K and pass through the foot of PF. That's what you need. All right, theorem 40 will come into play on some other proofs coming down. So <clears throat> this is basically a a restating of that definition going in reverse. If a line is perpendicular to two distinct lines that lie in a plane and that pass through its foot, then it is perpendicular to the plane. So if I have this line and this line perpendicular uh, to AF, uh, then AF will also be perpendicular to plane M. So uh, the fact that it is perpendicular to one 
and two lines that lie on the plane makes it also perpendicular to the plane, makes that line perpendicular to the plane. So <clears throat> let's consider this. Notice it said two lines. So make a case why or why not. So um, you may want to imagine this is a visual image. So if STR is a right angle, can you conclude that ST is perpendicular to plane M? Well, no, you can't because there's no reason this couldn't swivel this way or swivel this way and cause um, you know it to be less than 90 degrees on one side and more than 90 degrees on the other side. So we need a another line. We need a second line on plane M to be perpendicular to S. So otherwise, it's just a it's just a floppy uh, right angle, uh, just a right angle to RT. Uh, it's not necessarily automatically a right angle to, it's not per automatically perpendicular to plane M. So, no, we cannot because it could be non-perp to other lines lying on the plane. <clears throat> it could flop back and forth. Okay, so there is, you know, there is one case where it would be, but we cannot uh, guarantee it. Okay, so now we've got proof that PV bisects TS. So PV bisects TS. So we've got uh, this triangle, which is split into two triangles, and we need to prove that PV bisects angle TPS. Now, it would be really useful then to be able to prove that angle TPV and angle SPV are congruent. That would allow us to prove that. And that smells like triangle proofs. So we know TS is perpendicular to plane M. If it's perpendicular to plane M, uh, then this is going to be perpendicular to TS. So that's going to produce right angles. We also know that PV bisects TS. So here's the given information. We know that this and this are going to be congruent because PV bisects TS, okay? And we also know that this is a right angle and this is also a right angle. So now we can start solving this proof. Okay, so after given, so I'll say, all right, PV, is, actually, let me start off with this. Um, so TS perpendicular to plane M given. <clears throat> uh, PV bisects TS given. Okay, now I've suggested you probably need five steps. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. I'm going to now note that PV is congruent to PV reflexive. Okay, I'm just going to take care of that. I don't have to do this in uh, this order, but I will go ahead and do it. So I'm going to mark that congruent to itself. Now, once I've got that, um, actually, I might be able to prove this in even less steps, but okay, let's just see here. Uh, I'm going to state that TV is congruent to SV definition of a bisector. Okay, and now I'm going to be able to say that triangle uh, TVP is congruent to triangle SVP. Uh, um, just getting those in the right order by side angle side. And then I'm going to be able to say that angle TPV is congruent to angle SPV by kappa kata kappa, corresponding parts of uh, congruent triangles are congruent. And 
yes, it does look like I needed five steps. And then I can say that angle, um, I can say that PV bisects angle TPS by definition of a bisect of angle bisector. Okay, because an angle bisector breaks two angles into congruent angles. We know this to be true. And so therefore, PV bisects TPS. Cool, we're done with that one. <clears throat> now, triangle, prove triangle ACD is isosceles. So we're trying to prove that this triangle ACD is isosceles using what we already know. Well, we've been told that AB is perpendicular, AB is perpendicular to plane M, and we're told that equilateral triangle DBC lies on plane M. So that's telling us that this triangle here is equilateral, which means all its sides are equal, and that's gonna be very useful. Now, to prove that this is isosceles, we can either prove the base angles are congruent or the two sides are congruent. Um, Proving the two sides are congruent will probably be the easiest thing, given that what we have is enough information probably to prove that triangle ABD and triangle ABC are congruent, and then we can kapakataka our way to AC and AD. So let's go ahead and start labeling some of the things we know. We know that this is a right angle and this is a right angle. It's hard to draw them on a three-dimensional space, on a two-dimensional space. We also know that this, this, and this are congruent because that's an equilateral triangle. So let's say <clears throat> AB is perp to plane M given, and then triangle... A, a DBC is equilateral given, okay, and now we can start doing our proof. Uh, we can say that uh, BD is congruent to BC by definition of equilateral triangle, and then we can say that um, AB triangle, sorry, angle ABD and angle ABC are right. And that's going to be by the fact that AB is perpendicular to plane M and uh, BD and BC lie on plane M and R and I. Uh, go through a foot of AB. Okay, now uh, I'm going to say that AB is itself, okay, by reflexive property. And so let's label that. Foomp. And now I have enough information to prove that ABD and ABC are congruent so triangle A, ABD is congruent to triangle ABC by side angle side, and therefore AB is congruent to, sorry, AD, sorry. AD is congruent to AC by corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, and therefore triangle ACD is isosceles, um, by definition of isosceles to congruent sides. Okay. <clears throat> and there we have it. All right. Uh, the rest now here on four, I do want you to go ahead and copy the link to the workspace you're using for your proofs because uh, that will make it easy access for me um, so I can monitor and support you along the way today. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. I hope that was